On today's show, get ready for some sweet fun, making maple syrup with a crew of first graders. What could go wrong? You eat it with pancakes. Want to try wild turkey hunting but don't know where to start? Well, you can start with an adult mentor right in the field. Do you want a slice of Time for Wild in the Kitchen. Need some ideas for that perfect outdoor snack? Look no further. And yes, they like to hide in the spring the wonderfully delicious morel mushroom. Need some help finding one? We've got you covered. Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi, everybody. Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, one sign of spring are robins, but another sign of spring is the running of sap in maple trees and the making of maple syrup. So what happens when kids try to learn how to do that? Our videographer, Josh Bryant, was there. We walked through a driveway to get here. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> we walked from Oak Point, about a five minute walk. We went through our school to the cabin. She taught us some stuff. The school is just like about three blocks away, and so they walk over and then we bring them inside and we do a little introduction with them. How many of you have ever had maple syrup? Real maple syrup. Who discovered maple syrup? even before George Washington. The Indians didn't keep it in syrup, they actually made it into sugar. Anybody ever had maple sugar? We learned about like nature and maple syruping and what you do to get sap. We were seeing how to, how to make maple syrup from maple syrup trees. Then we went to the woods, kind of took a hike. So we need to go find a maple tree, right? Yeah. Hey, let's walk out here and see what we can find. Let's check and see if anything's running here today. We learned to tap trees. How many of you can count to five? You're going to turn the drill handle five times. We got to drill a hole. You poke a hole through the tree. They all get to do that, so it's something really active to do. It's fun when they're really engaged like that. Two. You have to drill a hole in the tree. And then you put the, the thing, that thing, I forgot what it's called. What do we put in the hole? Um, a bucket. A bucket. A bucket. No. 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 The spile. And then you can put a bucket on it or a bag and then you hang it on and then you wait for it to drip in the bag or the bucket. We've been collecting a lot of sap, more than we knew what to do with it. Now we're cooking it down. So we put it in the cooker. It's called an evaporator. Can you say evaporator? Evaporator! Okay. What does it look like? It looks like water because it's mostly water, but it's sweet water. It's got a little sugar in it. And it's that sugar that's going to make it into syrup now. You put it into the boiler. You wait for it to get super hot. And then you put it on your, and then you eat it with pancakes. The kids are always pretty amazed. And they just can't believe that that water turns into syrup. So what we're going to do next is go inside the building. And we got to try some maple syrup. Thank you which I didn't really like because I, I'm used to my own maple syrup. It tasted sweet. Yeah, really sweet. I think it's important for them to know where their food comes from. The syrup that they buy is actually coming from a tree. I learned a lot today. How many of you had a good time? Give me one of these. If you want to come back again, give me two of them if you want to come back again. You know what your next thing is you have to do today? You have to walk all the way back to school. 
No sense trying to hunt a turkey alone. Get a little help from an expert, an experienced mentor. That's next. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Jesse Treble Safe Basements of Minnesota. Running Aces Casino and Racetrack. And by Connecticut. Welcome back. You know, no matter what outdoor activity it is, hunting, fishing, there's always a first time, right? That's true for turkey hunting as well. So a member of our team, Lindsay Hayes, well, she was up to bat. Good morning from Cannon Falls, Minnesota. Turkey fever has definitely set in. First day of season D. We're going after Hopefully a big time, it would be my first. Starting a new tradition is special no matter what your age. And Mitch Banks from Banks Outdoors is guiding me for my first Minnesota turkey hunt. We're just above the Cannon River Valley here, which allows a lot of turkeys to come up and roost, so we should have a lot of good action this morning. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. Beautiful morning, uh, beautiful sunrise, and no wind. And uh, right from that point, I had a good feeling about today. Do you hear it? We got a little action over here right now. A lone tom kicked off the morning show. I think one of my favorite parts was just getting to watch this guy strut his stuff. He was hot on that hen's trail. It was awesome, and we got to watch him at about 200, 250 yards away. And to draw them in, Mitch is speaking their language. <laughs> Creating experiences like this is a huge priority for the Minnesota DNR right now. They say in-action mentoring is the best way to learn and their adult mentoring program is far more than a guided hunt. We've got the, a great program that we've worked out with the National Wild Turkey Federation in the R3 portion of it, the recruitment, retention, and reactivation. Uh, NWTF really understands that, that uh, we need more. We need to step it up some more and provide opportunities not, alone, not only with the kids, but with adults. The program started in 2013. It's adults teaching adults everything they need to know before, during, and after the hunt. The generation generation is so important because we've kind of missed that middle group right now, the millennials from whatever that age is to, to 40 or 45 years old. So far, there have been 37 successful turkey hunts and counting. I love turkey hunting because really, when you can have a Dr. Doodle moment with, with a turkey, that's pretty incredible, when you can talk with the animals. Meanwhile, Mitch and I are having our own Dr. Doolittle moment. <laughs> the birds have answered Mitch's call. Boy down. <laughs> Smoked him. <sighs> yeah, baby. Nice job calling him in, too. <sighs> <Okay. sighs> oh, yeah, there he is right there. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. 
it was storybookish. Probably half an hour, 45 minutes, we were watching the bridge. So it was a lot of building up to that point. So, I mean, I was right there with you. I felt like it was all a part of it. Big old Tom. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Nice fan. Well, here he is, my uh, beautiful first Minnesota Tom. What a morning it was, and Mitch, thanks so much uh, for helping me. He did a great job calling this morning. I just can't get over it. Look at the van, beautiful bird, good size. You got a mature Tom out of here, there's yeah. no doubt about it. I have dreamed of doing this for a lot of years. I know they all won't go this smoothly, but for my first, I'll take it. It's 7 a.m. and I'm tagged out with a memory and a newfound passion. It's just a day I'll never forget. We are making venison jerky. Up next, a tasty and nutritious spin on the venison in your freezer. Closed captioning is brought to you by Border View Lodge. Time now to go wild in the kitchen. Let's see what could be cooking today. It's always something very tasty, all right? Today we are getting wild in the kitchen, cooking up healthy snacks. And I'm here with Jim Kinberg, who's the executive chef at Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar. And Jim, we are making venison jerky. One of my favorite snacks of all time, venison now, jerky. Now, I hear this is your secret recipe. It is, I was kind of torn if I'm gonna <laughs> share it with you, but. I am, so here you have it. Here we have it. Okay, so what are our ingredients here? All right, so we're gonna start off with the venison. That's our foundation we're building off of. I've got uh, a roast that comes off the leg. We've got a little maple syrup. Okay. We've got a little bit of soy sauce. Mm -hmm. Here's another secret ingredient, garlic chili paste. Uh, garlic powder, onion powder, kosher salt, and then a little smoked paprika. Okay. So we're gonna you know, mix together our marinade. So just add all these. All right, so we're gonna whisk this together and then we're just gonna set it aside. So now we're ready for the next step, which is to slice up the venison. And probably the most important thing about slicing the venison is if you notice, all the grains in this muscle are running this direction. So we wanna slice in this direction. That'll, you know, because jerky is dried out. It can be very tough, especially if you cut it with the grain. So you wanna make sure you're cutting across the grain. So now we've got all our meat sliced up the nice little pieces. We're gonna put that right in the marinade. You just wanna kinda of mix that in there. And we're gonna let this marinade for about a half an hour, 45 minute tops. Okay, so it's been about an hour now. Yes. And uh, you can see our, our meat is nice and marinated. It's soaked up a lot of that good flavor. Now what we're gonna do is just kinda, you see I have this nice oven grate, and we're simply just gonna kinda lay out this meat right on the rack. You wanna leave some room in between if you can. So your lowest setting usually on your home oven is about 160 degrees. Ideal temperature for jerky is about 90 to 100 degrees. I like to vent it just a little bit. And if your oven door won't stay open, you can always prop it open with a pair of tongs. Just kind of put it right in there and just let it be. It's going to take about five to six hours. Oh, these look great. Wow. So you can see Perfect. how dark they got. I mean, if you pick them up, they should be nice and firm, dried out. Well, we thank you, Jim, for sharing your secret venison jerky recipe My with pleasure. all of us. And not only is this wild and delicious, but it's also a healthy snack to take with you on whatever road you may travel. Look at the size of that one. Morel mushrooms, they can be so hard to find, but so worth the effort. That's next. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Northland Tracker Boating Centers, Minnesota Rebath, Heaven Roof, the official outboard motor of Minnesota Bound, and by Totem Resorts. Perhaps you've heard about the tasty morel mushroom that grows wild in our woods. If you have, people gush over that fungi. 
If you haven't, you're wondering, how could I get in on the action? Daughter Laura Shera has the details, Morel Hunting 101. It's a great day to look for morels. I think we're gonna be able to find a couple. Morel mushrooms, a game of hide and seek with one delicious reward. I uh, really enjoy spending a day in the woods. It's about my favorite thing to do. Today, landowner Scott Gage invites foraging expert Teresa Maroney to share her morel hunting knowledge. There is a touch of Indiana Jones in it. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. There's no bats flying at me usually because I do it during the day. Well, this sure looks like a good spot. A lot of dead elms and a lot of live elms too, which makes a difference. You kind of want a mix of dead, recently dead, and maybe still some living elms. That keeps the forest going for some time. So Teresa, this is an area that I was thinking about that we'd start off in. Kind of had the characteristics that you were looking for of the dead elms, southern exposure, and then a little bit of a bowl. Mm -hmm. But you're the expert. Well, I did write a book on it. Here, why don't you have a copy oh, of that, wow. Scott? Thank you very much. Yeah, Fantastic. This is the first one that you're going to see in the season, and it's gray. They're finding that the grays and the yellows are just different phases of the same mushroom. Let's go check it out. We've got some dead elms right here. See these trees here, by looking up, we can see that they're dead. They still have their bark, so they're recently dead. Sometimes it seems like you find a mushroom at a tree, mm -hmm. and other times you might find 15 mushrooms at a tree. There's one right, right here. Right there, look at the size of that one. We got one, Scott. Oh, there's another one. We found an area that we thought would be productive an area I have not looked in before, and uh, we've done really well. That's one right there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one back there that I can see without even trying. There we go, beautiful. Okay, so a lot of people, when they're picking morels, they just grab it and twist it off at the ground level. What I do is I grab them and I cut them off at the base. I'm not disturbing the underground mycelium, which is the thread-like fungal roots that produce the mushrooms. And when you pull the mushroom out of the ground with a big clot of dirt, you're disturbing the mycelium and you're taking some of it away. Beautiful. There we go. Isn't that a nice one? Now, Scott, you and I know what morels look like, but a lot of people don't. And this is a classic morel. This is the yellow form. It's got a smooth white stem, and the cap is honeycombed. But what you really want to do is cut it in half like this. It has to be completely hollow inside. There are some things that aren't morels that confuse people, but they're not hollow inside. So anytime people are learning about morels, that's the first thing they have to learn, is to cut them in half. Anytime you pick a wild food, you have to be 110% sure that that's what it is. It's all wild mushrooms that you pick have to be cooked, and the morel is no exception. They do have to be cooked. I think part of it is the mystique. They're so hard to find. The season is usually very short. Teresa's dead on when she says, you know, the bonus is finding the mushroom. It's just another way to enjoy nature and explore. It's a little bit like hide and seek with mother nature. The big thing is never trespass. Don't assume that you can, just because a place looks unoccupied, you can go do it. You really have to check, but you can forage for mushrooms and berries legally in all of the Minnesota state parks. Find a woods near you for a treasure hunt of your own. All right, well that went pretty good, huh? Yep, you got it, and a couple of good ones too. All right, look at that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott, yeah, this wonderful. was just great. great this was experience. just great. Oh yeah, now if you find a big patch of morels, don't tell anybody but me, okay? Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Take a morel mushroom hunting. I'm Ron Sharon, of course, the star of the show. I should teach her how to hunt morels with Raven. Transportation provided by 
Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.